if you're a kind of innocent till proven guilty person, then you'll probably accept this nan's are true. And then you've got a huge amount of material, <laughs> early material. But if you're a guilty until proven innocent sort of person, then you've got almost no material because there's, mm. there's no real way to verify an isnad. That's the problem. Mm. How do I know that you know this person heard from this person heard from this person? And they say huge amounts of them go back to Muhammad, and I mean, if Muhammad was to actually have to say all the things that were attributed to him, <laughs> he would have had to talk for at least two hundred years. And this was a problem that was recognised. So this isn't just me as a non-Muslim. You know, kind of blaspheming. <laughs> Muslim scholars tried to come up with various solutions to how they could verify this. So they, for example, they had a whole system of isnad analysis. They had biographical dictionaries of scholars, and they would say how reliable the person was. So if you got a tradition from Muhammad saying this, you could check up isnad, go to your dictionary and look. Ah, that person isn't reliable. So I mm -hmm. think that this report from Muhammad is not as good, say, as this other report where all the links in the chain are reliable. So it, it's a, a problem that was... And some Muslim scholars were very sceptical. For example, there was a theologian called Amazan who um, said, you know, people who say, I heard this from so-and-so, from so-and-so, they're people with weak minds and they just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> they should stick to rational reasoning. <laughs>